page two. And this one, page four. Do you remember, we've talked about empirical formulas before. Do you remember what, the, what, what it means? We did it all the way back. Okay, you see. It is something to do with ratio. Lowest whole number ratio. Now sometimes point five sneaks in. But in ba basically we're saying this is the smallest whole number ratio for the um, constituents of that compound. And the last time we talked, we used this term was when we were talking about omni, ionic omni, and that the, the naming that we have for our ionic compounds is an empirical formula because it's the smallest whole number ratio of the ions <coughs> present in the ongoing lattice. Yeah. So now we're we're looking at it again, but in the context of calculations, and so that Bria will finally answer that question because you said yeah. you couldn't. Uh, you sort of half forgotten it. Mm. So let's have a look at what we're going to do with our calculations, with our worked example on the top of page 27. So this is that we've got some lithium metal and we're reacting it with oxygen in the air. So that means it must be O2 gas because we know that oxygen in the atmosphere is a diatomic molecule, it's not the element. And we're going to produce lithium oxide. Now, lithium oxide, what kind of compound will that be? Um, Ionic because lithium's a metal. Yep. Yeah. Now, what charge does the lithium ion get? One plus, plus one. It's in. It's in group one, so it forms a plus one ion. So when I write lithium oxide, what would I have to write? Li2O uh, to balance it. So that means my equation is not balanced. What am I going to need to do to balance it? Put a two in front of the lithium. Um, yeah, Sorry. and then is everyone happy that that's about how we would balance it? Yeah, so um, that's, I guess, an aside, but that's uh, something that we need to be able to do is recognise our bonding and also go on to balance our equations. So we know then with our, we, if we're going to work out the composition of our lithium oxide, if we started out with we started out with 4.97 grams of lithium, didn't we? And then when we, after our reaction, this weighed our lithium oxide compound had a mass of 10.89. So therefore, the oxygen present in the in the lithium oxide must be 10.89. Subtract 4.97, 5.92 grams. Now notice that when we're talking about finding the the empiric the, uh, the empiric formula or finding out the percentage of an element in a compound. I'm not writing it as O2 here, I'm writing it as oxygen because I want to find out how much oxygen is in the lithium oxide, not, I'm not talking about oxygen gas. So we, we start our process with um, the mass or percent That's our first row. This is how we always start. And 
what we want to find is the number of moles. So if I remember that the number of moles is equal to the sample mass divided by the molar mass, it's the same calculation we're going to do here. I want to find the number of moles of each, and so I'm going to divide them by their atomic masses. So the atomic mass of lithium, 6.941, and the atomic mass of oxygen, 16.00, tells me then 0 0.716 moles. Okay, that's what I calculated, moles. For, and, and I'll just put it in a table like we've got in our Inputs, and this one is 0 0.370 moles. Are you with me so far? All I've done is find the number of moles of each. Now for some reason, the next, uh, some students get these around the wrong way, they divide the wrong thing, but if you remember that the sample mass goes on top all the time in this relationship, you should be able to get this around the right way. Now what we want to do is convert this into whole number ratio. And the way we do that is we divide through by the smallest number of moles. So we have to divide everything by the smallest number. Now, the one that I've divided by itself is always going to come out to be 1, isn't it? Um, and then this one came out to be 1.94, which is approximately 2. We have to round it up to a whole number, because that's what we're after is an empirical formula. 1.94 is pretty close to 2 in this. Would you ever round it down to the lowest? Yes, like the, the answer might come out to be 2.03 or something like that, in which case you would then round it. You're still going to be rounding it to a whole number. Yeah. If you get a number like 1.7 or 1.6, you've made a mistake. Okay, that's nowhere near 2 or even 1.5. It's, it's indicating an error. So, um, again, that's a common mistake that students will make is that they'll get something like that, 0.7 or 2.3, and they'll round that. Um, that's a long way away. Uh, and so what this has told me is my oxide is lithium oxide. Because this 2 then tells me that I've got two lithiums for every oxygen in my compound, and I just use these numbers to write the name of Is that okay? Now this is a pretty straightforward, simple one. This, this step here does make it a little bit more complicated, that you know that you have to find the mass of the, um, but you weren't just given the mass of the oxygen, you had to find it. But um, this was still quite simple because there's only two elements. It can be a little bit more difficult if you've got three or four elements, say, and one of them wasn't given, then sometimes students forget to find that missing mass and they calculate without it. Um, but rule of thumb is that you lose a mark per mistake, so you keep going. Um, and so even if there were sort of four elements, you'd still be dividing all of them by the smallest? Yes. Okay. Yep. And um, so it's in, in our exams and tests, it's commonly an organic molecule that you're finding, and so you'll have carbons and oxygens and hydrogens and chlorines potentially. And so, yeah, the process is the same. Now, you don't need to worry about what you start with. It could be a percent, it could be just the masses like this. All you need to remember is that you're finding the number of moles from whatever it is, the whole of what you're starting with, either 100% or the total mass of, um, of your compound. Okay? Have a go at, um, there's a 
there's a try it yourself. There's also a, a little bit of a, a list of tips on what to do. And there's another couple of worked examples. Let me know if you think that you want me to work them through on the board. Otherwise, you can just read through them in the booklet. This is a bit of revision.